Multiple linear regression is a common statistical technique used when one is employing a correlational design. The correlation design is the most commonly seen design in Walden DBA doc studies. This training video is the first of a two-part series covering the regression technique. In part one of the training, I will explain what multiple linear regression analysis is, discuss the most common types of multiple linear regression, I will address sample size requirements for multiple linear regression, I will also depict how multiple linear regression questions and hypotheses are to be stated, and I will briefly address the assumptions surrounding multiple linear regression and how to combat assumption violations. In part two of this training, in a separate video, I will show how multiple linear regression is performed using SPSS and discuss how the statistical results are to be presented. Multiple linear regression is a family of parametric techniques used to examine the relationship between one continuous dependent variable also known as the criterion variable, and more than one independent or predictor variables. Regression is a prediction technique, meaning multiple linear regression does not imply cause and effect. Multiple regression is a logical extension of bivariate correlation analyses, which examine the relationship between two continuous variables. All doctoral studies using multiple linear regression requires the use of multiple independent variables. Again, bivariate correlation analyses are not sufficient for a doctoral level study. More so, the variables used in multiple linear regression must be based upon sound theoretical or conceptual reasoning. That is, one does not arbitrarily throw variables into the equation. That is to say that the review of the literature substantiates the inclusion of variables and each variable included in the analysis must be addressed in the review of the literature. There is an excellent example depicting this concept in Appendix B of the Research Handbook. Please be sure to review this valuable resource. Let's now discuss the types of regression. We will first start with what is called standard multiple linear regression, or you will also hear it termed simultaneous regression. Perhaps this is the most commonly used regression technique. In standard multiple linear regression, the researcher is examining how all of the predictive variables as a whole predict the dependent variable. In multiple regression, the combination of all predictive variables are termed the model. Thus, you may hear the term prediction model. In standard regression, all of the predictive variables are placed into the equation simultaneously. We will review this concept in part two of the video training. Also, this is why standard regression is also coined simultaneously regression. Let's take a look of an example research question that is appropriate for standard multiple linear regression. In this example, we will use the color blue to depict the independent variables and the color red to depict the dependent variable. And a research question can easily be stated as follows. What is the relationship between A, B, C, and D. Again, where A, B, and C are the predictor or independent variables and D is the dependent variable. Please note, these are to be the exact variables identified in the purpose statement. Recall, for quantitative studies, the independent and dependent variables must be identified. There is no need to restate separate research questions for each variable. More important, the research questions must be stated in temporal order. 
That is, the predictive variables are presented before the dependent variable. Be sure that you present in temporal order consistently throughout the proposal. That is, anywhere you discuss your variables, speak about your independent variables before talking about the dependent variable. Again, in this example, A, B, and C are the predictor or independent variables and D, which is in red, is the dependent variable. I also want to raise one other important point. You will notice that in the research question, the word and is in bold and underlined. That is because the word and serves as a delimiter between the independent and dependent variables. So anytime you see the word and, the variables to the left of the word and reflect the independent variable and the variable after the word and depicts the dependent variable. So when you are crafting your research questions, follow this example, use this example as a blueprint and simply insert your variables in the locations of A, B, and C and the dependent variable in the location of D. Of course, you would extend the example based on the number of independent variables, but again, you must have at least two independent or predictive variables. Let's now shift our example to the hierarchical regression analysis. Again, the researcher is examining how a set of predictive variables as a whole predict the dependent variable. However, under this circumstance, the researcher is seeking to control for the influence of one or more other variables. These variables are known as covariates. Again, all variables are termed the model. Unlike standard or simultaneous regression, where all of the predictors are placed in the model at one time, the predictors for hierarchical regression analysis are placed in the model in what is known as steps or blocks. And again, we will examine this more closely in part two of the video. But again, let's take a look at how a research question is stated using hierarchical regression analysis. Again, A, B, and C will depict the independent variables. This time, D will depict the dependent variable and the colors orange will predict the control variables. So, the question would be stated as follows. What is the relationship between A, B, C, and D while controlling for E and F? In this example, there are three independent variables represented by A, B, and C. There is one dependent variable represented by D, and there are two covariates or control variables represented by E and F. Again, these are to be the exact variables identified in the purpose statement. Recall, a requirement of the purpose statement is that the independent and dependent variables must be clearly stated. In this case, because you have control variables, which are in essence a form of independent variables, they must be stated also. Again, there is no need to state separate research questions for each variable. And as in simultaneous regression, the variables must be presented in temporal order. Sample size determination is a very critical requirement for quantitative studies. There are various statistical packages out there to calculate the required sample size. However, I am going to use a formula provided by Tabachnik and Fidel, who are well-noted authors in writing about multivariate statistics. In their text, they depict the formula of 50 plus 8 times m, where m equals the number of predictive variables. Remember to include the covariates if you are running a hierarchical regression model. I show an example depicting three and four predictive variables. In the case of three predictive variables, a minimum sample size of 74 is required. If you extend that to four predictive variables, a minimum of 82 is required. So it is important to keep in mind the implication of adding additional variables. 
it is suggested that you use what is known as a parsimonious approach. In other words, do not use too many variables in your study because it can do things such as oversaturating the model and lead to other uh, assumption violations. However, anywhere between three to four good variables are sufficient enough for a DBA doctoral study. I have provided the reference for Tabachnik and Fidel at the bottom of this slide. However, please be sure to read up on power analysis or sample size calculations for quantitative research. One thing I do want to point out is that you will not use the sample size calculator for finite populations. You must do a power analysis using statistical software or either this formula when you are conducting null hypothesis statistical testing. I now want to talk briefly about parametric assumptions. Uh, a detailed discussion of parametric assumptions are beyond the scope of a short video such as this. However, when using multiple Rooney regression, there are certain basic assumptions that are drawn about the population from which the sample was drawn. For example, you want to make sure you have a sufficient sample size. In other words, if you do your power analysis, as we depicted in the previous slide, this assumption will be met. Another key assumption is that of multicollinearity. Uh, multicollinearity is a condition where any of the two independent variables are highly correlated. This is a condition that you want to avoid at all cost. If you do run into this condition, you must decide on removing one of the independent variables from the analysis. And you can assess this assumption by simply running a scatter plot matrix and viewing the correlation coefficients from a correlation analysis. Another assumption is that of singularity. And this is a condition where the dependent variable is a combination of other independent variables. So you can avoid this by not including a total score when you are using the subscales of an instrument in the equation. So for example, if you are measuring employee commitment and there are three categories of employee commitment and you're going to measure for each of those categories, you will not add the total score of these categories as one of your predictive variables. Two other very important assumptions that must be assessed are those of outliers and those of normality, linearity, homoscedasticity, and independence of residuals. Uh, there are various plots that you can use to examine uh, the existence of outliers, and also there are various plots that you can use to examine the residual spread of your data distribution. Uh, while these are beyond the scope of a short video like this, the important thing to take away from this is that you must assess these assumptions before you run the multiple regression analysis. Therefore, reviewing a good statistical textbook is imperative when you are going to run multiple regression. Be sure to read up on the parametric assumptions and how to assess those parametric assumptions when running multiple linear regression. However, in part two of this video, we will discuss a concept called bootstrapping, which is a procedure that one can run to account for any serious violations of the aforementioned assumptions. In this short video, we discussed the concept of multiple linear regression. We went on to then discuss two of the major types of multiple linear regression, which are standard and hierarchical. Although I did not talk about stepwise, I do want to make the point that stepwise is an exploratory technique, and you do not want to use this technique in your DBA doctoral study. We then went on to discuss sample size, where we reviewed this, the formula by Tabachnik and Fidel of 50 plus 8 times M, where M represents the number of predictor or independent variables. We then looked at how regression questions and hypotheses should be stated, and then we went on to address the basic data assumptions, and I mentioned the bootstrapping technique, which we will look at in further detail in part two of this video.